All right, welcome to Zig for the Uninitiated. Today we're going to talk about the stack, we're going to talk about the heap, and we're going to talk about um, lifetimes again. So we talked about that in the last video, this is part two. We're going to go over a practical example, um, like I promised. A caveat about this example is that the code is not the most uh, efficient. It's probably not going to be the, the best Zig code you can see. Uh, the goal of the code was to provide a real-ish practical example. I don't like contrived examples, so I aimed to have an example that would might be something you'd actually meet uh, when you're coding in Zig. So let's look at this example. Uh, first, I want to show you what it, what it does. So if we run Zig build run and then dash dash source main dot Zig, we're going to get something that prints out a partial stat of the main dot Zig file. And so we could see source main zig. We can see its size. Um, we can see that it's a regular file. We even get its inode number and we get the access uh, pattern for it. So we see it's read, write, read, write, and just read. So this is a, a, a simplified clone of the stat function or the stat command. If you do source slash main dot zig, you'll see that it does something similar but more um, and so our, our example is a very simplified version of that let's take a look at what it takes to do that and how we can learn or what we can learn about the uh, stack and the heat as we go into it all right so we have here our example code as i you know said it's a simple stack clone now let's jump down to line 14 uh, and our main function so our main function is going to start out by getting the arguments that are passed to the process. This is just the command line arguments. And then we do some arg handling. And then we're going to open a file descriptor. And we're going to use that file descriptor to collect the stat. Sorry, that's done there. And then we're going to format the stat message. Um, and that's where we want to focus on. So I've folded all the other code. It's all extraneous. We don't really care about it for the example. Okay. So we look at the stat message, we see that we are getting a U8, or rather a slice of U8s. And if you remember what a U8 is, it's an unsigned 8-bit integer, or another word for byte. So we can say we're getting a slice of bytes back. And what we might think we're getting back, it's a temptation to think about this, maybe even a, a mental shortcut, is we think we're getting back this, you know, uh, an array of bytes that looks like file and, and all the other stuff in there. But that's not what we're getting back. What we're getting back is a slice. So if we remember our video about slices and pointers and arrays, when we look at that video, we remember we talked about a slice and said a slice is just a struct, a struct that contains two values, a pointer and a length. And so what we're getting back is actually this struct. We're not getting any of that data back, but we're getting a pointer back to that data. And so we say, okay, well, where's that data live, right? Remember, we were thinking about the heap, and we're, or rather, we are thinking about the stack. We know that stat message, the variable, that slice lives on the stack. But where does the data that it points to live? Well, we, we got a few ideas here to help us out think about this first we can take a look at format stat format stat takes an allocator in fact we can see that we've passed in an allocator to this function so that's the, that should probably make us think hey, maybe format stat allocates something on the heap um, it's a good it's a good hint you know hopefully it's not taking an allocator and then not doing anything with it um, we hope that it's allocating something another kind of hint is that if we're getting a pointer out of a function, we really hope that that pointer isn't pointing to data that lives on that function's stack frame. Because remember from last time, in the last video, every value has a lifetime. And particularly those things that exist on the stack have a lifetime of the stack frame. So once a function exits scope, once it returns, that memory, all the memory that was associated with that stack frame is no longer valid to be used. 
And so we really don't want to be pointing to data to memory that's no longer valid for us to be looking at. So we're going to go with the assumption here that the stat message is allocated on the heap. We look at the format stat function, we can see a few things that happen. First, we're going to get the mode. Uh, this is just a function. We'll look at it in a bit. Um, but it's a function that gets out that, that mode um, string. So if we look at here, it's what creates this part here. Okay. Then we get the kind. That's another function that just prints out the kind of file that we get, right? So here we see regular file. That's what we get back. Okay. So that's what those two functions are doing. But here's the one that we're interested in. We see const buff equals try standard format alloc print. We say, okay, we're getting this alloc print. And we can even see that we return this buffer. So that's the pointer that we were looking at, right? Or the slice that we're looking at. Indeed, we see that buff is a slice of U8. So we know that it must be coming from this alloc print function, which it does. This alloc print function returns a U8, or rather a slice of U8. And if we look into the documentation and look at the code, what we'll see is that alloc print takes in an allocator, it takes in a template which we have here. This is a template string, or rather in zig, this is the way you write a, a format literal. In zig, this is how you write a string literal. And this is how you write the format parts of it. You know, we don't need to worry about that. And these are the arguments that we want to pass into the formatter. What's really important is that the alloc print function allocates onto the heap and then returns a slice that points to the uh, the data that it's allocated on the heap. And so now we can be passing around this fat pointer or a slice that points to that data. So that's once again, the format stat function. In fact, I've got a, we've got a good visual here of what it looks like. Kind of think about what it looks like. So on the stack, we have, you know, the main function and it has its stack frame and all the um, variables that exist there. Then the format stat function was called, and we can see that it has its stack frame with buff and kind and mode. And we can see that buff points to this other data, 0x7faef839300. I'm sorry that you just had to hear me read off the address. And you know, the stack extends out, there's more unused space, but we skip all that and we come down to the address here. And we can see, okay, there's a spot in the heap with this address, and there's all the bytes of that string, of the fully formatted string, and that's where it exists. And so then we come back and we say, okay, it makes sense. This buff has, you know, the buff variable has its own address on the stack. And that when this function returns, that address, or rather the data that's contained at the address, is copied out and put into stat message, which is why stat message also points to the same uh, variable out here, for the, or same bits of data all the way down here. So that's what we see when we're passing around things that have been allocated on the heap. But what if there was something that we didn't want to allocate on the heap, right? We, we needed to allocate on the heap here because one of the reasons why we need to do that is that file name is a runtime known string. We don't know when we're pro, you know, when we're compiling this code, how long file name has to be. It could be one character long. It could be a hundred characters long. Um, I think there's a limit in Linux on how long file names can be, but it could be very long. And we don't know. And so we allocate on the heap and say, you know what, at, at runtime, just we'll just get enough space that we need, create the string, and then we'll print it out. And we don't have to worry about making the stack super big when it doesn't need to be that big. Or, you know, not having enough space on the stack. It, it's there's a lot of reasons why we, we want to make that a dynamically allocated thing.
But there are things that we might know how long they are. For example, the mode string. If we look back at this string that we print out in the mode, we can kind of think about this and say, you know what? The access values for our, our mode or the access, the permission values are always going to be the same size. It doesn't matter what the value of the, uh, the mode is, we will always get a string that can be formatted in this size. So this is exactly what we have with the mode function. And the mode function, if we look at, or the format mode function, we could see that it returns 17 bytes of data back. And that is the actual bytes. So remember when we talked about in the stat message, how we could think, or we could be tricked into thinking that we were getting those actual bytes out when we were getting a slice instead. Well, with the mode function um, right here, the format mode function, we are actually returning those 17 bytes. Now, as an aside, you, you might think that 17 bytes is a lot. Is that copying a lot of data out? Is that inefficient? Eh, perhaps, but we also have to remember that stat message is a slice. And on my machine, a slice has a pointer, which is eight bytes. And it has a length, which is eight bytes. So a total of 16 bytes. And that's just one byte less than my mo format mode function turns. When we look at the format mode function, we can see what it does is that it's going to allocate right here, 17 bytes. It does this by using this fancy zig syntax where we have, we're declaring a U8 or a, an array of bytes, all of them being zeroed. And we're going to multiply, we're going to do a, an array multiplication. This double star is a special operator in zig allows you to multiply an array and expand it. All right. And you're saying, wait, why are you multiplying it by this? Well, I'm multiplying it by the length of this. And so I'm saying, hey, I want something. I want an array that can fit all of this information in it. That's kind of a fun little trick that you can do. Probably not the most readable, but it's kind of fun. And also not important. If you don't get it, that's fine. Not important to right now. What we're doing is then just filling in all that stuff using the buff print function. And so remember we had up here the alloc print function, which takes in an allocator and then creates some space on the uh, heap and then puts data into that space. What we've done here is the buff print function where we take a buffer and that buffer can exist on the heap, but it could also exist on the stack like it does here. And it'll put the data that we want into it. It'll format that data into that function. And then we return that buffer. So if we look at the stack here, we can see what's happened here. We got the main uh, stack frame, we got the format stack frame, and we got the format mode. And we can see that there's a couple different variables. We have the mode, which is passed in as a parameter. Don't worry about that. Then we have the buff and we have M. And then buff is returned. And when we return buff, all that data, it's not like the data in the, in the stack frame, right? This address is then just added onto the stack frame. No, we copy all the data that is at this address and we put it into here. Uh, no, not here, into here in mode. Remember, because this buff becomes the mode of the other one. And so that is done. And then we use the mode inside the format stat function and we copy that data into the spot where the buffer exists. Okay. Okay. So why couldn't we return a, a pointer to the buffer? Well, remember, we talked about this earlier, but if we just did, you know, hey, we're turning a slice of U8 and we worked like this, what buff would point to is a, point, a slice where the pointer points to values that are allocated on the stack. And that is not good, okay? Because that data is not valid anymore. And in fact, next video, we're gonna talk more about different kinds of 
uh, memory errors or memory issues you can get into. Right now, I just want to talk about the heap and the stack and the allocators. But I did want to say, hey, this is a recipe for disaster. In fact, I wonder what would happen if we ran this. Oh, I should probably save this file first. So if we ran it, it's going to build. And right now, you think, hey, whoa, that works. But actually, look, got some kind of error. This isn't what we wanted. This isn't what we wanted at all. Why is that happening? Well, in part because the memory is not valid anymore. And we don't really know what's going on anymore. So we're going to change those back and should get it to work again. We rebuild it. There it goes. It works just right. So one last thing. We come all the way back to the main function. We've discovered where stat message lives, where the underlying bytes of stat message lives, right? So we know that stat message, the variable, lives on the stack, but that the data that stat message points to lives on the heap. And what we need to do is when we are done with that data, we need to free it. We need to say, K program, K process, we don't need this data anymore. And that's what we see here with this defer statement. Defer and zig is just a nice way to say, run this code when the function exits, right? Once the function exits, it'll run all the defer statements in reverse declaration order. So if we had another defer statement down here, it would run that one first, and then it would run this one next. And if there's more up here, it'd run those ones last. But anyways, what we're telling is we're taking the allocator and we're saying, hey, I want a free stat message. And this is because free takes an array or a slice and frees it, gives it back to the allocator to use for other places. All right, that's the end of my video. Uh, that's the end of this, this video. Next time we're going to talk about some memory um, errors, you know, memory leaks and double freeze and use after freeze. And I think that this has really gotten us set up so that you can be really ready to understand that. As always, if you got questions, comment on the uh, down below, or if you've got comments, just comment down below. Um, also, I'll put in my Discord channel. We've got a Discord server up, and you can come and we can talk about this video or other things, and a uh, link to my website if you want to read more. Thanks. Happy coding.